Hello and welcome to the Ottawa Herald's 2012 general election candidate interviews. I'm Bobby Birch and I'm here with Blaine Finch. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Finch. Thank you, Bobby. Uh, Mr. Finch is a Republican candidate seeking election in Kansas House District 59. Uh, well, Mr. Finch, uh, I'd like our viewers to learn a little bit more about you. Could you tell us where you're from and, and uh, maybe how you're involved in the Ottawa community? Certainly. Uh, I am a, a lawyer here in town by trade. Uh, that's my education and uh, my profession. Uh, I am from Ottawa. Uh, lived here all my life. Went to Ottawa schools and graduated from Ottawa University. Went to Washburn University School of Law. Uh, and came back here about 10 years ago to uh, practice. I am the owner and managing partner of Green Finch and Covington uh, downtown at 2nd and Main. And uh, I live just southwest of Ottawa on Old Highway 50 with my family, my fiance Haley, and uh, our daughter Brody. Okay. Well, uh, I know we've talked a little bit about this in the past, but what kind of political experience do you have? Uh, I have been a, a former city commissioner and mayor of the city of Ottawa. I ran for that office in 97 and uh, was mayor in 98, 99. And then I've worked on several political campaigns. I worked as an intern for Representative Ralph Tanner, who held the 10th district seat back in, uh, in 98 and 2000. Uh, that was an area that stretched from Ottawa to Baldwin and uh, worked with Ralph in the state house and then helped run his campaign. Uh, and also have uh, worked to for uh, previous local officials to help them with their campaigns. So I have some experience in campaigning and uh, also in governing. Okay. Well, what are some of the uh, your legislative priorities uh, in your platform? Well, it's important for me to, to prioritize uh, what the state needs to be involved in. Education is top of the list for me. Um, our Kansas Constitution in Article 6 it says that it's one of the primary duties of the state legislature to secure funding for education and take care of that. So that's going to be a priority for me. 54% of our state's budget is spent on education. So if we're going to see any kind of uh, reform in terms of spending uh, or moderation in terms of uh, acceleration of spending, we need to make sure that we're, we're accounting for 54% of our budget. So I also believe we need to keep that funding source strong. We need to continue to fund public education and make sure we're getting the best return for our dollar. Um, I'm also concerned about economic development. Our state needs jobs right now. Our economy, even though the, the new jobs numbers show some uh, reduction in unemployment, Franklin County still has an unemployment rate of 7.5 percent, and we need to be working diligently to make sure that we're bringing jobs and the right kind of jobs to the state. I've said before that Kansas is a brain drain state. That means that we do a good job of educating people at both the high school and post-secondary level, but they tend to leave after that because the jobs that they want that will pay them are not here. So we need to make sure we're getting the right kind of jobs coming in. So I'm going to be focused on economic development. That's a legislative priority for me. Uh, and finally, infrastructure. Uh, every 10 years or so, we do a comprehensive transportation package in Kansas. The last one didn't include any new additions. It was all about maintenance of what we had. So I want to make sure that not only are we maintaining what we have, but that we're strengthening and building roads where we need to and taking care of public infrastructure as a whole. And that includes helping cities and counties with their infrastructure needs. Uh, several years ago, the state would share revenue with cities and counties to make sure that bridges and roads and sidewalks and, uh, and water treatment plants all got built uh, at, without raising property taxes on, on local uh, residential and, and commercial uh, owners. We need to get back to some kind of measure to take care of that and make sure that our infrastructure remains strong. So those would be my three priorities. Okay. Well, of, the, of those three priorities, uh, education, infrastructure, and economic development, um, if you could choose one, maybe how, uh, how would you go about uh, advancing those priorities or accomplishing them? Well, you know, let, let's talk about education uh, for a minute because right now there's a lot going on in this legislative off-season, if you will. Uh, the governor has a committee that's looking at school finance. I understand that the Kansas Association of School Boards is putting together a, uh, its own committee to look at school finance, and I think there's going to be a lot of legislation introduced uh, and debated in the coming session about education finance and what can be done there. And I, I see my job is, is to get in at least initially and learn as much as I possibly can about the state funding formula. I know some, uh, but I want to know more. I, I need to make sure that I'm absolutely well versed in the issue. I need to talk with superintendents and teachers and parents and taxpayers and make sure I've got all those perspectives in mind as we move forward. Uh, and, and then I think it's my job to make sure that we do no harm to our state education system. If cuts are being called for by the governor, uh, we need to 
cautiously review those and give those a full and fair hearing. Uh, but we need to make sure that we don't do anything that's going to harm the quality of our educational system and make sure that our kids are, are well provided for. I'm also open to looking at innovation in education, whether that's through uh, charter schools or whether that's through um, innovative strategies like uh, math and science education programs, the STEM program that's been uh, implemented in other states like Arkansas. Uh, it, that is something that we need to aspire to, to have more science and technology education in our state so that we can retain and attract jobs that focus in those areas. So all of those things would be important to me, uh, but first and foremost is to make sure we don't harm our educational system in this time of, of uh, more fiscal conservatism. Well, um, if you are elected to the Kansas House, uh, are there any committees or action groups that, you, that you'd hope to become a part of? I think that, you know, by nature of, of my education and background, I would probably be on the Judiciary Committee. Um, other than that, it's going to kind of be up to leadership and, and how that plays out. Uh, and those decisions will be made in early December, and if I'm elected, you know, I would be a part of that conversation uh, as well. But I would hope to, uh, to serve on commerce uh, or be involved in issues related to commerce. My background in economic development and working with businesses I think would be helpful there. I could add some perspective. Uh, I'm interested in utilities. Uh, we have a municipal utility here in Ottawa. Um, you've seen recently in your newspaper the issues that are going on in Pomona with Kansas City Power and Light and, mm -hmm. and their 40% increase. Uh, and I've worked uh, with AT&T and, and other utilities before, so I, I, I think that would be an area where an interest would lie. Of course, education is important to me, and, and that committee as well would be one that I would be interested in serving on. So. Hopefully, uh, depending on how everything shakes out, and uh, there's going to be quite a few of us this time, if I'm elected as well, that don't have the, we haven't been in the legislature as elected officials before. Uh, I think it's something like 80 of the 125 House members may have little or no le legislative experience. So it will be interesting to see how leadership sorts and sifts through that. But those are areas that I'd be interested in serving on if I'm elected. Okay. Well, um, much of the uh, 2012 legislative session was defined by political gridlock and, and inability for legislature to reach compromise. It, if you are elected, how would you reach compromise in Topeka? Well, I, I think I have a record of doing that, of building consensus and working together with people of different backgrounds. You, know, you, you can't live in a small town and, uh, and not be able to work with people with different opinions. Uh, you have to see those people when you go to the store, uh, when you're at the high school game. Uh, so that, that sort of thing goes on. Now I think that as far as having that conversation in Topeka and, and how I could contribute to that, uh, I don't think compromise is a dirty word. Uh, I don't think it's a bad thing for someone to exercise moderation in life and to have conversations with people of, of diverse backgrounds and diverse opinions. I think that's the only way we move the ball forward. Um, you know, our, our union is the product of the great compromise, uh, the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia when the states were deadlocked about how to share power in Congress. It was a compromise that ended up breaking that deadlock and moving the process forward. So in many ways, we wouldn't have our republic today if our founding fathers hadn't been willing to embrace that compromise. And I try to embody that spirit myself. So whether you're on the left or the right or somewhere in between, I think we all need to sit down and have those conversations about the issues that are important to us. And we have to be respectful of each other. There's far too much mean-spiritedness. There's far too many uh, put-downs and, and uh, and jumping to conclusions about people just based on a position that they may take, and that needs to stop. We need to have civility in our discourse, and we can disagree without being disagreeable with each other. Okay. Well, uh, the legislature's research group has predicted that the Kansas new budget will uh, result in a several billion dollar shortfall by 2018, uh, while its supporters claim uh, that it will help the state economically and create jobs. Uh, what do you think of that plan, and if you? Uh, do you feel like it needs to be addressed, perhaps? In, in when, yeah, well, we're going to have to address it because Kansas, by law, has to have a balanced budget. So, if I'm a legislator, uh, you know, my job is to carry out the law and uphold it, and, and that would, we'd have to balance the budget. I have seen the the legislative research uh, divisions research on that, and they uh, they indicate that we will have a shortfall. I don't have any reason to doubt them. Uh, I think just because they, they don't give us the word that we want sometimes, we can't throw them out and, and refuse to acknowledge what those facts are. Um, you know, facts are stubborn things, as John Adams said, and uh, that's true today. And I think the fact is that a tax cut is the same as a spending increase in terms of its effect on the bottom line. Uh, you're taking revenue out of the state coffers, and that has to be replaced somehow, whether that's through a, a more uh, measured spending, 
uh, or a tax increase, and I would hope not to have to raise taxes. So you're probably looking at spending cuts uh, given the, the current uh, political mood. How do you get there? Well, there's some revenue generation things that can be done without uh, raising taxes, some loopholes that can be closed. Uh, and the, the governor's original proposal included those. It was a package that included both the tax cuts, the cuts to the, the individual income tax rates, as well as closing some tax loopholes in order to raise the additional revenue and keep that bill close to revenue neutral for the state. The House of Representatives did not pass that version. They only passed the tax cuts. The governor ended up signing it without that. So I think what you'll see in this session is a move to bring back some of those revenue generation measures and keep that a little more revenue neutral over the long term. Well, uh, the Kansas Economic Progress Council recently released a report claiming that the new tax plan will result in $9 million in budget cuts to public schools and higher education. If such a cut to education does occur, uh, how would you react uh, in legislature? Well, I think we always have to react in a measured way. I think, you know, these, these projections, again, uh, you know, you have to take some of them with a grain of salt if they're not produced by independent third-party groups. Uh, like the Legislative Research Council, that is their one job to provide those those estimates. Um, we'd have to look at that. If it does if it does result in in that kind of shortfall for education, I think we need to find a way to make that up. Uh, I don't favor cutting education at this point unless we can show with uh, a high degree of certainty that that can be done without reducing the quality of the education that we provide. And if we can't do that, then I'm not going to be for any cuts to education. What are some of the main differences uh, between you and your opponent? You know, I've only uh, talked with my opponent one time, uh, and that was at the uh, the forum that we both attended. And I think the public saw there that uh, on on many things uh, in Kansas, we kind of have what's called a modified one party system. Um, you have Republicans that that may be of different opinions, and then you have Democrats who are traditionally more conservative. Uh, and I think that my opponent's a fairly conservative Democrat. Uh, in fact, I'd say some of his positions may be border on, on being almost Republican. He probably wouldn't want me to say that, but, uh, you know, I, I'd say we'd probably disagree on the level of, of spending at the state. Um, I think he would probably be in favor of more spending across the board. Uh, I'm not. I think we have to be fiscally conservative, but we can't run our government off the rails either. There are things that government has to do. He's probably a little more liberal on, on a few social issues uh, than I am. Uh, I tend to be a little closer maybe to my Kansas roots on some of those uh, than, than he is, but uh, I don't have anything bad to say about my opponent. I think he's a, a young guy trying to get into politics, and uh, I applaud that. I was I was there once, and uh, hopefully I still am. I'm not getting too old yet, but uh, <laughs> I, I wish him the best, just not in this race. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I, I know you mentioned this is one of your legislative priorities, uh, infrastructure. Uh, what are your thoughts on Kansas infrastructure now in, in terms of roads? Do you, do you feel like we need to continue advancing a plan? To I talked with, uh, I went to the ribbon cutting for the, the northern part of the 59, uh, US 59 project and, and had an opportunity to meet with the Secretary of KDOT and the Assistant Secretary, and we talked a little bit about roads and, and uh, you know, the comprehensive, the last comprehensive package was passed, the T-Works plan. And I think that, uh, and I'm not speaking for them, and I'm speaking for me, I think there's a general concern that the state has in the past rated those, those transportation funds to fund other things uh, when they didn't want to make difficult decisions. And uh, there's a fear that that may happen again. And uh, so I think that generally the state of our roads is pretty good. I think that that's one of those bits of infrastructure that if you don't stay ahead of it and constantly keep it up, just like your, your home, you know, if you don't maintain the gutters and the roof and those sorts of things, once you get behind on that, the repairs become a lot more expensive. And it probably gets to a point where you can't maintain uh, what you've got without the necessity of large tax increases, which nobody wants to see. So we've got to stay ahead of that. So I favor spending on transportation. I favor keeping the quality of the roads that we have and expanding in certain cases, cases like US 59, where it's a safety issue, where it's a, a commerce issue, and we need to have a new road or have an enhancement made to an existing road. So I would support those things. My last question, kind of relating to uh, why, why do you think that you might be the best candidate to represent your district? Both hometown boys, I know. Well, I, I think, uh, you know, that, that hometown thing goes so far, and it's important. I mean, it, you, you get a feel for the people in the area, and they know you, and I think that's vitally important. Um, as to what makes me the better candidate in this race, I think I have the experience. 
Uh, I've been here both in Ottawa in, involved politically uh, and in Topeka. I've also worked in economic development and that's going to be critical for our state right now. Uh, whether you agree with the, the tax cut plan or not, one of the underpinnings is that they want to create jobs. And people right now are frustrated. There are people who are unemployed. There are people who have seen their, their wages as a percentage of, of, uh, of spending have remained stagnant. Uh, and they need someone there who understands economic development. I brought jobs to Ottawa and Franklin County. I want to bring jobs to Kansas. So I think that experience is an important factor. Uh, I think we need somebody who is uh, is willing to work across party lines and uh, and try to cut through some of the uh, well, you know, there, there's a, a country term for it, but we'll say uh, cut through some of the fake stuff and the nastiness and uh, and just be able to be genuine and work with people and try to get things done. And I really have a heart for this community. I think people who know me know that. I've uh, been involved in public service here in one capacity or another for 15 years. Uh, and this is an opportunity to continue that. So I think that makes me the better candidate. I, I have the proven results and the experience and I have the desire to continue to go to work. And I think that we can be effective and I can be effective in Topeka uh, in, uh, in helping this area to grow and uh, to get things done for the people who live here and represent everybody, not just one segment of the population. Right, great. Well, that concludes our interview with Blaine Finch. Thanks for watching. Thanks for, thanks for coming in, Mr. Finch. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs>